Hello everyone, my name is Elia, I am a system architect working in Germany and today I would like to share a story that happened in April 2024. I underlined the date because Microsoft Cloud Services develop rapidly and it's crucial to understand the context of time. First of all, some theory. The domain name is not just a formality, it's a key element in forming user principal names and email addresses. And if you are not planning to use the default domain name, I mean on Microsoft.com, you have to add at least one your actual domain name in Azure Active Directory or Enter ID that's essential. It's not a big deal, but your domain can be a part of only one tenant at one time. And if you want to move the domain name between tenants, you must first delete the domain name in the source tenant. You can ask me, why should we do it to move the domain name between tenants? The most popular reason is company reorganization. Some groups of people need to move data and resources, of course, to a new tenant and they want to take their existing domain name with them. I had almost the same case. My start position was as follows, one Active Directory forest and all users use domain.com as part of user principal name. Two Entra ID Connect servers were deployed and every Entra ID Connect server sync user to their tenants. Two tenants had the same list of users but with a teeny difference. In the first tenant, I name it the source tenant, domain.com was registered and all users could use domain.com for authentication. A temporary domain was registered in the target tenant and all users had to use it for authentication. As you know, one domain name cannot be used for two tenants simultaneously. Yeah. My goal was quite simple. We had I had to migrate into managed devices between tenants. I had to migrate enterprise applications and of course we had to and of course I had to move licenses between tenants. The customer had an enterprise agreement and it means that it's possible to move licenses between tenants. However, we needed licenses for both tenants simultaneously at least for the migration period. And to solve this problem, we bought SCP licenses for the target tenant, at least for one month. So, all licenses were duplicated and in both tenants we got the same list of licenses. So, we started to migrate into managed devices and, of course, right after, users had to log in to the new tenant using the domain temp.com. It's obvious, yeah? Enterprise applications were pre-created for the target tenant and I waiting or very waiting for final changes. The plan for day X was the following. In the source tenant, we were going to disable licenses and remove objects. Uh, when I say remove objects, I mean to move objects to the recycle bin. Why? Because the next step was to remove the domain name itself. And that's only possible if there were no objects using this domain name. So, after this, we added domain.com to the target tenant and forced Entra ID Connect replication. Because domain.com was used on-premise, as soon as domain.com appeared in the target tenant, all user principal names were updated and domain temp.com was replaced by domain.com. As a result, all users got the correct user principal name, we adjusted licenses and we could use enterprise applications in the target tenant. The first test showed that users could be authenticated, licenses were applied and single sign-on for enterprise applications also was available. Of course, all users had to sign in 
to the Intune app using the correct user principal name on managed devices, which also was done without any issues. But disaster came into our lives unexpectedly. Outlook for iOS stopped working and we spent two days trying to figure out with the issue. We wiped devices, we compared Intune settings, we disabled conditional access policies and tried many other things without success. And after two days, we could find only one thing. If we revert user principal name to temp.com, it starts working. When we almost gave up, Outlook for iOS started to work without any changes. Two days have been since we changed user principal name. And to be honest, the first idea was that the cache was the reason. But we expected, I, we, I mean team, of course, it was not only my work, I was a part of a team. And, but we expected 24 hours. And after the day, we stopped thinking about the cache. On the same day, it was Monday, we received a response from Microsoft support. Microsoft support confirmed our experience with the cache. Literally, they said, based on our information, blah, 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 blah. When a user principal name is changed, these cache details can become outdated. Typically, around 48 hours for the cache to refresh or expire and pick up the new UPN. It was exactly our experience. 48 hours. What I wanted to say, if you are going to change your user's UPN, plan a wait interval of at least 48 hours. I would have spent my weekend another way if I had known it. So I wish you good luck and see you again on my channel.